Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about the process to follow to design a user interface. The learning objectives for this video are as follows. After watching, students should be able to explain the process of the user interface design, and they should also be able to describe and use various tools and diagrams to prototype the user interface. Here's an example of what the user interface design process should not look like. The process has five main steps. First, understand the users that you're designing for. Second, organize the interface. Third, define standards or use predefined standards. Fourth, develop prototypes of your system. After developing prototypes, you need to evaluate and test that prototype and then go back as needed to the other steps in the process. It can be a very iterative process. Let's talk about each of these five steps in a little bit more detail. First, you need to understand the users that you're designing for. Users likely will have very different goals and intentions when using the system. You can use personas to develop characterizations of various user groups. These personas could include interests, typical behaviors, goals and objectives, or expectations of users. Then you can plan a user interface that will be satisfying for that particular user group. A good example was described in the textbook using the tune source case that has been used in all of the chapters. Here are some likely personas that could be developed for that system. You have Angelica, the browsing shopper, who comes to the system not knowing what kind of music she wants and really just wants to look around. Then you have Carl, the hurry up shopper, someone who comes to the system who already knows what they want and need to be able to find it quickly. These two different types of users would likely use the system in different ways, so the interface needs to accommodate both types. Think about the system that we're designing for the semester project. What type of users will be using this system? Are there multiple types or only one? What do those users expect to see? How do they expect to use the system? These are questions you need to think about as you're designing the user interface. The second step, after you have gained some understanding of the users, is to organize the interface. In other words, define the basic components of the interface and how they work together to provide functionality to users. You can use an Interface Structured Diagram, or ISD. This diagram shows how all screens, forms, and reports are related, and how a user can move from one to another. They're similar to data flow diagrams in using boxes and lines. However, in this case, boxes denote screens, and lines show movement from one place to another. Here's the example for Tune Source. So when you open up the Tune Source system, the first thing you'll see is the main menu up there at the top. Then you have the option to click to menu A, menu B, or menu C. You can see that these are set up in a tree-like structure, and they're numbered accordingly, with the top level being 0, the next level being 1, 2, and 3, and the next level being, for example, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 and 1.3. The number at the bottom of each of these boxes is a number that corresponds to the data flow diagram. This isn't always strictly necessary, but it is helpful. Let's look at another example to make things a little bit more clear. What if you wanted to create an interface structure diagram using my personal website? What would it look like? Well, the top level of the structure diagram would probably be, you'd probably call home page and you'd number it zero. And then underneath that, you'd have six different screens or options. You'd have bio, CV, research, teaching, other, and contact. Then under research you'd have another level where you could get to four different screens. The research overview, the research statement, venues and co-authors, or citations. Many websites also include a hierarchy on their website that's called a sitemap, which is similar to an interface structure diagram. Let's take a look at another example. Here's the sitemap for the college's graduate programs website. You can see that they have things organized in an outline format, so you can quickly see how the website is organized. The difference between an interface structure diagram and a sitemap is that the interface structure diagram uses the boxes that are linked together. So a lot of these pages might actually be linked together, but they don't show that here. A sitemap is a simple outline. You'll create an interface structure diagram for the semester project as part of this week's homework. Use the example on the previous slide that's in the textbook as a starting point. The next step is to define standards, or use predefined standards. What we mean by this is you need to clarify decisions on all key interface elements to make sure that they are consistent. Here are some tips to help you in defining standards. 
One thing you can do is to use standard interface icons or pictures representing status or actions. For example, the trash can icon is almost universally used to mean delete. The floppy disk icon is almost universally used to mean save. Another idea is to use interface metaphors when appropriate, for example, calendar, checkbook, or shopping cart. An interface metaphor models something after the real physical world. So for example, when you're shopping on Amazon.com, you can put something in a cart and then you can check out. These are the same concepts that you use in a physical store, putting things in carts and then checking out. Microsoft Windows is probably the system with the most famous metaphor. Everything is represented as a file that can go in a folder. Things can be put into a recycle bin. Almost everything in the Microsoft Windows operating system is modeled after physical work office space. That's what made Microsoft Windows so easy to use and popular. The next step is to design prototypes for your interface. A prototype is a mock-up or simulation of screens, forms, or reports. The most common methods include the following. First, you can create a sketch on paper or in any drawing app. You could also do a wireframe diagram. A wireframe diagram shows a box outline where elements will be placed. You'll see an example in just a second. A third option is HTML prototypes, which is a prototype of what your system will look like using web-based tools, even if the system is not a web-based system. The final option is a language prototype, which is a prototype using the programming language that the final product will be coded in. That is, you design the interface itself of what it will look like. It just might not function if you try to press any buttons on it. Here's an example of a wireframe diagram. As you can see, it basically puts a box placeholder for where all the different pieces of the system will go, but it doesn't show the actual colors or information on the screen. Here's an example of a language prototype. Again, it looks like the actual forms or menus that you'll see in the system, but when you try to push on the button, it probably won't actually do anything. You'll see examples of HTML prototypes when you do this week's homework. The final step is evaluation and testing. There are multiple ways to evaluate your user interface prototype. The first is heuristic evaluation. This means comparing the design to a certain checklist. This is the way that I'll be grading your prototypes that you do for the homework. I'll probably have a checklist that has the six key interface design principles, layout, content awareness, aesthetics, etc. And I will rate your design on each of those categories. That's one way to evaluate an interface. Another way is a walkthrough evaluation. This is where a team simulates movement through components. So if I created a system, I could then sit down with the potential user and walk through it with them and say, here's where you'll see this, here's where you'll see that, here's where you'll click. An interactive evaluation is similar to a walkthrough in that users try out the system. Instead of me sitting down and telling you what to do, I just give you the prototype and tell you to take your time looking at it and trying things out. See what works for you and what doesn't, then give me feedback. The final way to evaluate an interface is with formal usability testing. There are departments and even entire organizations that are dedicated to testing interfaces. These can be expensive, they sometimes have detailed use of special lab testing. They're very thorough. Once you've evaluated your prototype, you can go back through the several steps, see if you need to understand the users even more, see if you need to reorganize the elements or use different standards, then update your prototype and evaluate again until it's ready to go.